Krishna. Hare Krishna. So we're back home in Blighty, as they call it. What do they call it? Blighty? Old Blighty? It's Britain. It's Britain. We're back home in Britain. And the weather has been rain, rain, some sun, and more rain. And a rainbow. And a rainbow. But no matter, come rain or, sh rain or shine, rain or hail or snow or whatever, we will read Bhagavatam. Almost. Okay. <laughs> Canto 3, Chapter 33, Text 22. Free 30... Free, 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 two, two. And today is... Free, two, two. Not really. 24, three, 23. If you're into numerology. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Alright, text 22. <coughs> Vidura. Thus, always meditating upon her son, the Supreme Personality of Godhead Kapila Dev, she very soon became unattached to her nicely decorated home. Jeepers. <laughs> Jeepers. <laughs> Here is a practical example of how one can elevate oneself in spiritual advancement by Krishna consciousness. Kapila Dev is Krishna and he appeared as the son of Devahuti. After Kapila Dev left home, Devahuti was absorbed in thought of him and thus she was always Krishna conscious. Her constant situation in Krishna consciousness enabled her to be detached from hearth and home. Hearth. Half. Is that how you say it in England? Hearth? hearth? You hearth. say hearth. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Yes, as we already discussed, when one is absorbed in Krishna consciousness, <coughs> then we naturally, then the key word being naturally, become detached. And uh, sometimes when we're in an immature stage, we preach on the detachment or act on the detachment before we have the attachment to Krishna and just in terms of family setups, marriages, parents, kids, it causes a lot of um, upset and grief until you become mature in the relationship with Krishna to practice this process and be in the world as it were. Powerful. I'll read the next par 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 or paragraph. Unless we are able to transfer our attachment to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, our attachment to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, there is no possibility of becoming freed from material attachment. The Srimad Bhagavatam therefore confirms that it is not possible for one to become liberated by cultivation of empiric philosophical speculation. Simply knowing that one is not matter but spirit, soul, or Brahman does not purify one's intelligence. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. Even if the impersonalist reaches the highest platform of spiritual realization, he falls down again to material attachment because of not being situated in the transcendental loving service of the Supreme Lord. So we see here that loving service to the Lord, a personal relationship. Personal relationships vitally important to our um, security in Krishna conscious development. Otherwise, just having the facts and knowledge that I'm a spirit soul, I'm not the material energy, I'm not this body, is not enough to guarantee you could say complete liberation or ultimate fulfillment of one's uh, spiritual destiny, which is an eternal loving relationship with Krishna. So loving devotional service, loving implies relationship. 
There has to be uh, the lover and the beloved. So like that. The bhakta and ba Krishna, the bhakta, bhakti. Like that. Next paragraph. <clears throat> the devotees adopt the devotional process, hearing about the Supreme Lord's pastimes and glorifying his activities, and thereby always remembering his beautiful eternal form. By rendering service, becoming his friend or his servant, and offering him everything that one possesses, one is able to enter into the kingdom of God. As it is said in Bhagavad Gita, Tato Mam Tat Pato Natva, after discharging pure devotional service, one can understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead in fact, and thus one becomes eligible to enter into his association in one of the spiritual planets. Interesting point that it says after discharging pure devotional service then one can understand the Supreme Personality of God in fact. Now I was thinking yes how um like how we were saying also we all do this we due to the impressions and the blueprints in our own minds of certain types of people, whether it be gender, colour, job, position we already um, conclude something, that's what they're like. And many times when we sit down and you speak to them, maybe because you have to, or in a situation where you just connect, you you like you can walk away like, this is a really nice person. Uh -huh. Well, I really misjudged that one. So then here, it's explaining that you can understand Krishna in fact, in a factual way, like you get it, after you discharge pure devotional service, in other words, have, after you have that um, personal interaction, which is what devotional service is, that's how we personally interact with the Lord because devotional service is service to someone and that someone is Krishna. And if not Krishna, then his devotees who are very dear to him and definitely is going to watch or notice you if you're kind to someone he's dear to. And then you get it. So in the same way I was thinking, yeah, yeah, it works in terms of our interactions just with devotees mm. and people in general until I have some personal interaction with you I can't really say what you're like and all of that yeah. in the same way with the Lord again it comes down to that personal relationship personal loving dealings yeah very nice uh, text 23 thereafter having heard with great eagerness and in all detail from her son Kapila Dev, the eternally smiling personality of Godhead, Devahuti began to meditate constantly upon the Vishnu form of the Supreme Lord. I like that. The eternally smiling personality mm. of Godhead. It's not always smiling. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, it is. Hmm. Even when you're upset and trying to do something, he just smiles at you. He's like... <laughs> So, oh, sorry, rather, she did so with serious engagement. Oh, and these are the next two um, verses. Just to clarify, he's, there's no pop up for verse 23. So this is these are verses 24 and 25, in case that wasn't made clear. Yeah, I didn't make that clear. <laughs> she did so with serious engagement and devotional service. Because she was strong in renunciation, she accepted only the necessities of the body. She became situated in knowledge due to realization of the absolute truth. Her heart became purified. She became fully absorbed in meditation upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead and all misgivings due to the modes of material nature. Sorry. And all misgivings due to the modes of material nature disappeared. Her heart became purified. She became fully absorbed in meditation upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And all misgivings due to the most material nature disappeared. Okay, sorry. Didn't make sense. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's text 24 and 25. And there's no purple. There's no purple, but I'm going to give mine. I'll find the Lord. <laughs> Thank so she did so with serious engagement. So that's an important thing. Often Srila Prabhupada says two, two attributes are required for being successful in devotional life. 
You have to be sincere and you have to be serious. So those two things, sincere and serious. So here was serious engagement. She was strong in renunciation, which meant she had already done it for many, many years. She was really, really so renounced while her husband, Karda Mamuni, um, performed his own tapasya, that she became uh, really uh, like deteriorated in beauty and emaciated like that. So she became, because of this, she became situated in knowledge due to the realization of the absolute truth. So she became self-realized and her heart became purified. I mean, it's, it's difficult to grasp that a woman who gave, you know, brought, you know, in whose world, in whose life, the Supreme Lord appeared as an incarnation, still had to purify her heart, but okay. And she became fully absorbed in meditation upon the Supreme Lord, and all misgivings due to the modes of material nature disappeared. Mm-hmm. So... Um, I think more it's the fact that she's setting the example mm-hmm. here rather than, you know, these actual impurities are there. Mm-hmm. She's, she's the Lord's pure devotee. She appeared in her, you know, he appeared in her world, you know, as an incarnation. So, Hare Krishna. Yeah, and I think if we want, I agree it's an example. It would be a bit concerning if the person whom... The vessel whom Krishna uses to appear is dirty, as it were. Mm. I mean, you can choose to do that. <laughs> but just as Arjuna didn't really get confused on the battlefield, but had to be used in that way. But one thing I'll also say is that you're seeing this person who brought forth the absolute truth, whose son was God, mm. had to be... Um, had to realize it almost seems, you know, and go through that process. Mm, mm. And in the same way, I was thinking, this is what Srila Prabhupada did for all of us. Because right then and there, he plonked Radha and Krishna, in a nice way, but he put them, plonked plonked them. them in. And, and there you go, Radha and Anishwara, Radha Gokunanda, Radha Shamsunda, whoever's your Ishtadev. And it, it doesn't mean, oh, so you're you do Pajari service for the, for the deities, or, you know, whatever positions you may hold. Yeah, he gave us that end result, the conclusion, and then we spend the rest of our lives, as it were, becoming qualified and purified enough to appreciate the absolute truth that he's just put right there in front of us. And other people who look in might say, oh, they're so, like, they may look at us and yeah. they, they're so senior. Oh, and they do this. Oh, my God, you dress Radha Krishna. Oh, you did, I saw you do Narati the other day, or you gave a lecture on the Vyasa, but it's, no, so we got the, almost like in an exam, someone gives you the answer mm-hmm. and then a teacher pulls you inside and said, okay, you got 10 out of 10 because you got the right answer. Tell me how you got to that conclusion. Oh my God, you got to go and read the books mm-hmm. and realize it. If that makes sense. Uh, yeah, last part didn't, but oh. <laughs> a little bit, but um, yeah, I didn't quite understand. You have to go read the books. And so, you, okay, uh, let me elaborate then. Okay. So. So, in the same way that Prabhupada has given, he's given us all the answers in the books. Yeah. Absolute truth, he's realizing three phases, he's not in the ultimate, his name is Krishna, and he's, he's his mom, his dad, he does this, this, this. Don't, okay, I can tell you, I can rattle off so many things and tell you what color his dhoti is and tell you what type of necklace he wears and earrings and all that. But I'm not saying that I'm realized to that the extent that we just read about Devahuti. So I'm saying just as the student who's given the answer, one mm. plus one equals two, and they think, oh my God. But when the teacher says, so explain that to me. So someone says, explain that to me mm. about some aspect of what you're reading or what you're doing. <clears throat> then you're like, I better learn how what that means. I've got the stampings on the forehead and I wear the uniform, but I've got to realize, I've got to understand it. Yeah, that part I got, and I thought it was really, really good, really powerful how, yeah, Prabhupada gave us the absolute truth. We stand in front of Radha Krishna, the topmost forms of the Lord. We stand in front of Lord Jagannath, who's the embodiment of separation from Krishna. Mm-hmm. I mean, there we are in front of these things, just like that, you know. But at the same time, we may, we may be... 
we may be in the on the highest platform of devotional service, but we're not really on the highest platform of devotional service. You may be in Vrindavan, but you might not be in Vrindavan consciousness. You know, or so many personalities were standing in front of Krishna, but not all of them saw him as Krishna. So I got that, and I think that's a great and awesome point. I really appreciate it. Um, but what I didn't get was when you said, then we got to go away and read the books and become realized. Because I get it, Prabhupada gave us the books, he gave us the knowledge, but realization of that may not come just from reading a book. It was an absolute answer. Okay, yeah, but I guess it's the same. Like you know, we just have to keep chant, keep chanting, and eventually, the heart will become purified, yeah. and slowly realizations will come. Like that. okay, so I think maybe we stop there. Yeah. Um, not before we get to a rock, or <laughs> but um, just because the next purport yeah, it's really is long. It, well, it's, it's longer than usual. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> thank you very much. We agree on everything. Because we agree to disagree. Um, <laughs> so we'd like to encourage all of you to read the Bhagavatam. You agree with that, right? Yes. And we also agree that you should like, comment, subscribe, and share. So we agree on that, right? Yes. And we agree that Srila Prabhupada is the savior of the whole universe, right? Yes. We agree that Krishna is... God, God. Supreme Personality of God. And those are probably the most important things to okay. agree upon. Thank you all very much. Please read the Srimad Bhagavatam. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.